So in this video, I'm going to share a simple and practical way for you to share your faith that will not take much time and effort and won't require you to go outside your normal routine. You do not have to have any training or memorize any evangelism formulas, although I will give you one. And I will share with you two recent stories of me sharing my faith with others. And I believe this will encourage you to do the same. I will also give you some of the clips of the street evangelism I do here in New York City. So I'm so thankful that my parents had us in a local church when I was in my teens and childhood that did street evangelism. This showed us that evangelism is a normal part of the Christian life. We need to get the younger people doing this on early on in their lives. Doing street ministry in the 1980s and 1990s in New York City wasn't easy. We were the murder and drug capitals of America during that time. So it was really difficult ground. But exposure is so important, especially exposing this to the younger people. Expose your kids to evangelism, and this will become part of the fabric of their lives. I feel this is a much needed message for the church today. God wants to come and visit Amer America with another great awakening. At the same time, it's ripe for revival and reformation. This is how embers of revival start with a spark. This is a much needed message in the church right now. And I can tell you this, the Church of Latter-day Saints and the Jehovah's Witnesses do a much better job of evangelizing the world than the Christian church does. And this is a shame and this has to change. So the method God has been speaking to my heart recently is called friendship evangelism. It's simply showing yourself friendly to others as you go about your normal routine. And I will show you what this looks like. So you're going to want to stick with me to the end. A great evangelism quote is, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Another great quote is, you might be the only Bible that some people read. A recent poll, shocking poll, showed this. 90% of Christians will never lead anyone to faith. So that is 9 out of 10 Christians. And out of the 10% who do, 90% of them haven't done so in the last five years. So let me ask you a question. When was the last time you shared your faith? When was the last time you led someone to the Lord? Because what kind of faith do we really have if it's not worth sharing with anyone? And how could I claim to have the greatest gift in the world called the gospel if I never tell anyone about this good news. So my last video was about the solar eclipse prophecies. And these were just silly. Why? Because they take our eyes off the simple instructions of Jesus to be primarily concerned with the gospel message and the Great Commission. Some of these advanced prophetic things, they can help point us to different things. But at the same time, Jesus' message to us was simple. Over 2 billion people alive today have never heard the gospel. And these nations are what are called in the 1040 window, which is a small window of nations that are primarily Asian and Muslim nations, which are hostile to the gospel. Jesus said that he will not return until the gospel has proclaimed to all nations, and then the end will come, and Jesus will return. Another message that we don't hear proclaimed in the churches these days is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we want to be ready for that. Now, let me state this. I am not primarily evangelist. Evangelists are people who are gifted and empowered by the Spirit to lead people to the Lord. But we are all called to share our faith with others at times. And we are all called to share our testimony of what the Lord did for us. First Peter 3 says this, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Again, I am not primarily evangelist, so I'm going to leave you with no excuse. It's not naturally for me to evangelize, and I am more of a Bible teacher myself. I'm more concerned with the people inside of the church. Although I regularly do street evangelism with a network of house churches that I am a part of. We do weekly praise and worship services in Times Square in New York City for over two years now. We did two big events with Sean Fawcett and his Let Us Worship tour, which came to Times Square and 5,000 people attended in New York City, and true revival broke out. And the Northeast is a dark region, so most of the large ministries don't even bother coming here. Now, I don't agree with everything Sean Fawcett does and says, but I can tell you this, he is a prophet to this nation, and he's doing some of the best ministry in America right now. He is taking the gospel to the open air and having huge rallies at every city in America. So let me show you a photo of the recent rally. Okay, so you're seeing right here Times Square fully packed out. I'm the cameraman on the left-hand side. 
and it was just true revival in America. The whole Times Square was totally full. It exceeded my expectations beyond anything. So I'm going to show you a short video of the Sean Fawcett rally here in New York City. So come on, if you're here, you just say, man, I don't want to Okay, so I just wanted to play for you a little bit of the footage, but a warning to the wise, street evangelism in New York City can be a hazard to your health. Our team has had death threats at times, but we rest under the shadow of the Almighty so we don't get afraid. The enemy always pushes back against the proclamation of the gospel, so some training is necessary to do street evangelism. Here is a clip of a, rich, a witch rushing the stage and pronouncing curses on us at Sean's rally. Anybody out there, if you feel like your world is shaking, if you feel like your foundation is shaking, you can be on a foundation that will not be shaken. You can stand in a foundation that will not be shaken. See, I got it. I got it. How many of you guys know we bless everyone here in the name of Jesus? We were made in the image and likeness of God. Okay, so if you don't believe in the demonic, um, you have a case study right there in that situation with this witch holding a head hanging from a noose, and she was pronouncing curses and speaking in what sounded like demonic tongues. But here is another clip from a demon-possessed man that was threatening us as well at the rally. to sing this this chorus with me fuck life fuck life i'm gonna kill all you i'm the devil i'm gonna kill you all we're louder than you bro 
Keep screaming. We're louder than you. We're louder than you. You're a wind voice. We're thousands. Okay, so sorry that clip had some profanity in it, but I did want to give you guys a realistic picture of what happens sometimes when you're proclaiming the gospel. But there are times to do a street evangelism, and there are times not to do it. Bold proclamation of the gospel isn't always the way to go for various reasons. Evangelism is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Large rallies aren't always the way to go. It takes a lot of time and effort, and this can't always be done. Also, you, you get to see these people once, and you have no way of seeing whether the fruit is long-term in their lives. So this is something to keep in mind. A good method that I recommend using for street evangelism is the Jesus at the Door method. This was created by Scott McInara, who is a street evangelism pastor at Daniel Kalinda's church down in Florida. He came in and trained our team for street evangelism, and it's been very effective. So I'm just going to bring up a, a, a picture that we show people. Okay, so this is uh, Jesus knocking at the door of, of your heart, and we begin to show the this picture to people and ask them what they think and what they see, right? So this opens up the door for us to begin speaking with them about the gospel. So after we show them the picture of Jesus knocking at the door, we can simply go through this simple method that Scott produces on this card that he has on the website that I'm going to show that with you in a minute. But you simply follow this approach of explain, respond, and prayer. Okay, so explaining, you say, have you ever seen this picture before and do you pray in emergencies? Do you believe that God is there? This is Jesus knocking at the door of your heart. The handle is on the inside. Only you can let him in. Lots of people pray, but praying is like talking through the door. You don't know he is there somewhere, but you don't know him personally. Then we explain the gospel. Visualize wearing a backpack. If I filled it with all of your sin, would it be heavy? This represents your debt with God. It stops you from having a relationship with him. That is what he wants. He doesn't want your religion. If you owed the bank $10,000 and I gave you a check for that amount and you deposited it into your account, what would happen to your debt? Well, that's what Jesus did for you on the cross. He wrote you a check, signed it in his blood. Today, he is standing at the door of your heart, wanting you to cash in. If Jesus was here with you right now, would you let him in? Can you see the wind? No, but you can feel it, right? Like the wind, Jesus is here right now. Can I pray for you to feel his presence? Now, for the last thing, to turn from the road that you're on without Jesus, change directions and follow him. Do you want to follow him? And the prayer is simple. Dear Lord Jesus, I open up the door of my heart. I say sorry for my sins. I choose to follow you and make you Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so that's a simple, straightforward method that you can use for preaching the gospel in a very simple, straightforward manner. The most important thing that Scott taught us in the training session is to go after the low-hanging fruit, which simply means to go after people who are ripe and ready to hear the message. Don't go after those who are closed-minded to the gospel message. In those cases, you might need to pray to loosen up the ground in their hearts before preaching to them. You can go to jesusatthedoor.com for more information on that simple method. But I leave the picture on the back of my phone to remind me to share the gospel with people as I'm going about my daily routine. But you don't have to even use Scott's Jesus at the Door method. Sometimes just using the Bible can be more effective. Yes, I said using the Bible. I know that's a foreign concept in today's biblically illiterate world. Here are two of the best passages in the Bible that communicate the gospel in a simple and straightforward manner. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 6. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you of first importance, I also received that Christ died for our sins in according to scripture, that he was buried, and that he was raised again on the third day in accordance with scripture, and that he appeared to Caiaphas and the twelve, then appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of who are still alive, though some of you have fallen asleep. Another good passage is Romans 10, verses 9 through 13. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. 
For as scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. And the same Lord is the Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the Lord shall be saved. So my last video that I did was on these solar eclipse prophecies. They were all over the place and they got millions and sometimes hundreds of thousands of views. And since then, I realized that we can easily waste so much time on these prophecies, not saying that prophecy isn't important, instead of just doing what Jesus stated very plainly. That is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is the main point of Christianity, very simple. To proclaim the simple gospel message. And we need to get back to the simple gospel message in the church especially in the charismatic church. I recently heard one pastor at Bethel Church in Redden stating, we don't give the gospel much airtime at Bethel Church. And I was just like, oh my gosh, shaking my head on every level. How could you say something like that? It's all about the gospel message. Romans 1 verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Now, on to friendship evangelism. You are not always going to be able to do street evangel because this requires carving out time to do so. And it's not always the most effective method to use with everybody. To go right to someone's face and start preaching the gospel sometimes can be offensive or counterproductive to leading someone to the Lord. I feel the best message, the best method to use is friendship evangelism. This is simply being kind and friendly to the people that you come across in everyday life. Neighbors, people at the grocery store, gas station, or when you go out to eat someplace. One of my favorite things is to be very kind and leave a nice tip for the waitress and begin conversation with her and just ask her or him if I can pray for them for anything or if they believe in God and see where it goes. You're just being friendly to people, getting to know people a little bit and asking questions about their life. And after a few interactions, you might get a chance to tell them about Jesus or tell them your testimony. I was speaking on the phone with a follower of my channel last week and they told me they were at the grocery store and they saw an opportunity with a young lady. They were kind and friendly and ended up giving big hugs to the cashier and showed them the love of Christ. This is what Jesus wants us to do. This is the Great Commission. Well, that same week they shared this with me, I felt God speaking to my heart. He was highlighting one person in particular that is usually at a store I go to. And I have to be honest, at first I told God no. And inside my heart, I protested a little bit. I said, God, don't you realize how busy I am? I have a business I run full time, a rapidly growing social media ministry, ministry in the local church, volunteer chaplain work, and obligations to my friends and family. Lord, I don't have time. Yet the Lord kept putting this one particular person on my heart. And after a few days, I decided to say yes and make myself available. So I just started praying to the Lord that he would give me an opportunity, an open door, and that he would give me the words to say. Well, this man seemed quite on the quieter side and didn't seem open to conversation. He had all these tattoos, and that's how I started the conversation, just asking about the tattoos on his hands, his face, his neck. And he looked little, looked a little bit like a gangster, to be honest, right? And I didn't see this as an open door either. I was very close-minded. I said, I don't think this is going to go anyplace. But how many people know that we should listen to the Holy Spirit when he speaks? Because he knows much better than we do. God looks at the God looks at the inside where man looks at the outside. So I started talking to him every time I saw him, making a little chit chat here and there. Well, it turns out this was a huge open door. Now I'm in Queens, New York City, so there's not too many wasp around where I'm from. So it's the most ethnically diverse region in the world, according to National Geographic's magazine. When I first started doing street evangelism in my adult years, I realized I had a big problem because many people don't know English in New York City. And then one time. Time, I just made myself available and ended up leading someone to the Lord just using Google Translate. The Lord never ceases to amaze me. What will happen if we just make ourselves available? God will move. Well, it turns out that one of my friends is a missionary to this guy's country, right? And I know a ton about the region and the people because I'm close friends with this missionary. So I just started talking about his country and his people, and he started really opening up to me and sharing about his life. Well, it turns out my missionary friend 
is in a village 15 minutes from his hometown. And this led to me showing him pictures of the town and telling him what my friend does and what my friend, his mission in that particular town and that he's a Christian minister and he's spreading the gospel. And then this man started showing me pictures of his hometown and his family and his village and what his people are like. And it turned into like this amazing rich dialogue. So after several interactions that lasted each of about five minutes each, it was clear that we had become friends. He even invited me to stay at his house in his hometown and to show me around. So now we are planning a trip to his hometown and we are planning to hike some mountains in his village. He is going to come with me to visit my missionary friend's church and bring his whole family with him as well. <laughs> so he knows my friend is a Christian minister and really is eager to meet him. Then I started to become friends with the other people on the job that are from his country and speak with them about the situation. So it turned out to give me an opportunity to build several friendships with people and share with them about this story and this trip that we're planning. This was such a huge open door. And I never preached the gospel flat out at all. Although I can tell that this guy knows that there's something different about me, he can tell that I'm nice and kind, and he definitely wants to know more about my faith. But I know God is up to something big in this situation, and I just pray that it's just going to open up doors for me to lead this man to the Lord and different things. I have a Bible that I'm going to give him very short. And during this time, the same time period, I had another situation going on as well. It was like, God just open up the door. A guy I ran into several times at a gas station who always seemed to be hard out on his luck. So many times I would just stop, buy him coffee, something to eat, and I would just listen to him. Again, a few interactions that would last five to 10 minutes over a couple of time week span. And then after a few times, he started really opening up to me. I can tell again that we became friends. And I asked him and told him, listen, you're down on your luck. Start to pray to God. And then the next time I talked to him, I said, listen, start praying to Jesus Christ. Well, he puts his hand over his face and he just starts like he's totally amazed. And he said his mother just called him right before I met him and started to tell him, listen, son, pray and seek Jesus. He's going to lead you in his life. There were almost tears coming to his eyes. And I will run into him again. He was hard out on his luck again the next time I ran into him. And I'm just listening and being nice and kind. We got coffee together. And he told Told me his roommate stole some of his stuff and he's at the end of his rope and he doesn't know what to do. Well, his friend also stole his childhood Bible that his mother gave him and he was very visibly upset among anything. So, you know, that's just a huge open door right there. So now I have this Bible with me that I'm keeping in my backpack. So when I go along my exercise routine, I'm going to give him this Bible, replace the one that was stolen. And then that will give me an opportunity to go through some basic scriptures with him, maybe highlight or underline a few scriptures with him. So if his Bible hadn't got stolen, it wouldn't give me a chance to give him another Bible and then possibly do like a Bible, short Bible study with him. God is so good. And my faith has become so revived in such a powerful way. None of this was a, an inconvenience at all. It happened on my daily routine. And these interactions never took longer than a few minutes. And it created some huge open doors for me to really explain to people about God. And what I want to do today here is challenge you to do this as well. I want you to start asking yourself to make yourself available for friendship evangelism in your normally routine. Ask God if there's anyone he wants you to start building a relationship, anyone that he wants you to start speaking to, and just make yourself available. So preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Your life might be the only Bible that some people read. So thank you for watching the video today. Hope you're blessed. Please comment down below if something spoke to you in this video or you've had a situation like this recently. I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to hear what you're up to if you're sharing the gospel with other people or that you want to start there. Or if you have any prayer requests or anything, put it in the comment section. I'll go through all of them and I will pray for you. So if you'd like to support this channel so I can continue doing work like this and continue spreading the gospel here in New York City, you can find that information in the description below. That's just if you were blessed. It's not 
feel under no obligation to give, just if God is moving in your heart. And also, I'd love to connect with you on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you'll find that information down in the description below. So be blessed and encouraged. I hope this video encouraged you to begin to start using friendship evangelism in your daily routine and just be nice and kind to people and begin. And that will open up a door for you to begin to speak to them about God, Jesus, the Bible, and prayer. Very, very simple. Thank you. Be blessed.